All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We're just going to wait for people to pull up a chair and gather around. And we're going to be talking about logos today. So while we're waiting on uh, everybody to log on, I'm just going to do a quick warm up sketch here. So I thought for today, we're going to do a, a Gunther the Great warm up sketch here. So if you don't know this character, um, you should definitely get to know him because uh, he's one of my favorite villains from the series. Um, of course, he's seen as a villain, but what I like about him is his motivations are not villainous to him, you know. And uh, so it's all about your point of view. So he's a pretty human character. So we'll be getting started here in about five minutes or so, however long it takes me to do this sketch, I suppose. So if you haven't uh, familiarized yourself with this character yet, um, be sure to get on NeymarJuniorComics.com and check out the Let Astray series. It's kind of like a, uh, you get a bit of a backstory on Gunther the Great and uh, kind of how he came to be. No spoilers, so I won't go into too much detail, but he didn't always look this gnarly over here. I'll just say that. So again, we're going to be talking about logos here in a bit today kind of what it takes to make a comic book logo um, what makes it a, a successful comic book logo and kind of just what goes into it because it is a little different than say like a corporate logo but until then just uh, sit back and relax and Watch this warm up sketch while we wait on people to log on. You guys were early to class, so you get kind of a, a bonus warm up sketch. So we're going to give him a bit of a grimace here. He's not a Wednesday person, so he's kind of frustrated a bit. All right, let's finish this up real quick. And then we'll get started on talking about logos. A side note, I actually went to uh, school for graphic design uh, to college. And uh, they didn't have, say, like an illustration or comic book <laughs> degree per se. So graphic design was the closest thing I could do to that. Um, so this is actually um, something that I 
learned quite a bit on back in the day. We won't say what day. All right, I'd say that's a pretty successful warm up sketch here. I'll give it another minute or so to let people wander in and gather a chair. All right, there we have it, Gunther the Great. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started talking about uh, comic book logos. The reason I have Gunther pulled up here, um, I'm actually going to make a logo for this character, just as kind of like a demonstration uh, practice um, example, I guess, like a live example of how to create a, a logo for comic books. Um, for me, I like making uh, logos for comic books in pixel-based uh, programs. So what I mean by that is uh, for pixel-based, um, sorry about that, for pixel-based, uh, it's going to be more, um, it's not vector, so like vector would be more like Adobe Illustrator um things like that and so i i for comic books um i like to do clip art studio and photoshop kind of a combination of the two of those to create a logo uh reason being is you know comic book logos are usually more illustrative um they usually are you know going to have different elements they're not so design heavy they're not you know um they're more, I don't know how to, so I would say they're more visual or, um, you know, it's not going to be just manipulating a few points, uh, you know, and keeping it vector based. So um, without getting too technical, uh, let's just jump into this and start talking about uh, our Inked logo. And kind of one of the good things about a comic book logo is the ability to you want to be able to sort of manipulate it for different issues um you know add different things to it take away uh different ways to to make it stand out for a special issue or a holiday issue or or whatever you want to do um so here we have our just our basic classic inked logo that we came up with which actually it didn't have this behind there. This is essentially what we started with, okay? Um, so what we wanted was something that would really stand out, uh, be bold and strong, and something that, you know, you see it at the top of a comic book, like here. Uh, you know, if you were at a physical comic book shop, or even in the store, you usually only see from here up you know you only see about this part kind of peeking over the edge of a uh, the shelf or whatever so you need something that can really grab people's attention um, and things have kind of changed over the years especially right now uh, now that we have digital publishing and uh, with like Neymar Junior Comics uh, dot com and the app and stuff um, you're gonna get to see the whole image as a whole but the same idea still applies that you want to see this logo really pop and stand out and so uh, a way that we do that um, is definitely with the this logo with the ink logo we have our big bold uh, lettering here and then we came at it behind that and added this uh, kind of blot of ink um kind of representative of the you know the kind of magical ink that's used in the the comic book itself and the thing about logos and comics every cover is going to be a little bit different um so you need a a logo that can be um very adaptable and what i mean by that is like okay like right here we have a, a light colored background so we're good to go but if the cover up top is say black now our logo is gone. So a different way we can handle that 
one of the things we, we can do is drop in a glow behind it to help it still pop off the page. Or um, another thing that we could do is come in and actually just manipulate the colors themselves of the existing logo and still help that stand out. So, uh, and one of the things that we had done on one of the covers was actually done like the Brazil colors to kind of, uh, uh, you know, pay homage to Neymar and his, his uh, heritage. Um, so I'll kind of take you through our original logo here and just show you some different ways that we've applied it to different covers. Um, this was our thousand year harvest uh, special that came out for around Halloween uh, this last year for Inked. And um, so uh, what we did was give it kind of a an, uh, yellow glow behind it to help it stand out. And then also um, something I didn't talk about yet, but one of the things you wanna do with like a comic book logo, you're always gonna have different arcs um, or specials like this one's the thousand year harvest. So what we've done here is uh, create this sort of like subtitle right here. So when you're creating your main logo, you want to think about how can I incorporate subtitles um, or in this, you know, even up here, we incorporated uh, Neymar's name uh, into the logo itself. Um, so let me give you another example. Here's our Inked Aftercare uh, series. So again, um, we have the Aftercare down here, which is kind of like the, the name of the arc of the series and just kind of the, the subtitle, if you will, underneath the title. And again, uh, a good thing about you know, a good solid comic book logo, you want to be able to manipulate in different ways. And what we've done here is we've dropped in this sort of um, uh, dot printing filter over top to sort of harken back to like the older way comic books were printed. Um, so that was a really fun one to do. This one, let's see if I, yeah. Okay, this one's one of my favorites. So we have the Inked Kitty King series, um, which, uh, this story is sort of drawn from the point of view of this young character here. And so what we wanted to do with the logo was created in a way that maybe like a child would have uh, created the logo. Like if she was drawing this herself, you know, how would she make this logo? How would she create it? So um, as simple as it looks, you know, you kind of got to think about how how can I create this like crayon -like texture or crown crown texture? Um, you know, you want to make it colorful and still, uh, you know, it all comes back to our original logo, though, up here, um, the inked logo. So you just want to think about how can you keep your original brand, which is, you know, in this case is inked, but add to it and expand on it and change it, um, you know, give something fun for uh, viewers to check out. Um, here's another one of my favorite ones and another good example. Uh, this was inked the most wonderful time of the year, which was like our holiday special. And so uh, one of the things we wanted to do were was give it sort of a, you know, the holiday colors, the red and the green. Um, so we were sort of tasked with how do we keep our original logo, but give it the holiday flair. So um, other than the colors, of course, we added the Christmas lights here, which was a lot of fun. And then uh, down here, we have the subtitle underneath uh, for this particular issue, which we kind of wanted that sort of old school um, Christmas Carol font going on there. So, so there's a few examples of just like how this, you know, base logo started like this. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, so this is, you know, how it starts. And just different ways you can use that across different issues, holiday issues, uh, different series or arcs. And so I thought maybe a good way, a better way to give you guys a visual example of this would be to actually create a logo 
for a character. So it's kind of a hypothetical logo. But this, we're going to make a logo today for Gunther the Great because he's one of my favorite characters. And so he should definitely have his own logo. So Gunther is a, um, a large cat uh, sort of tamer. He's um, kind of like a carnival or circus ringleader. Uh, so I thought, let's, okay, so I guess let me back up here. So when you're creating a logo, you kind of want to think about how are you going to represent what you're trying to represent. In this case, um, this guy is, you know, like I said, he, he's the circus ringleader. Uh, he works with large cats. And so, of course, we're going to go for a uh, kind of a classic circus look. But at the same time, uh, as you can see here, he's, as you can see up here, this guy from his uh, face, he's been through some rough times. So um, we kind of want to represent that too. So we want a classic circus type feel, but also throw in kind of a little bit darker, crazy, uh, fun side to it. So um, I went ahead and laid out the font here uh, just as a placeholder. And um, depending on the logo, um, you want to sort of have a, a good balance with it. And for me, in this case, I'm going to try to create, I want the Gunther to be the same size as the great underneath it. Um, so what we're going to do first is change the font. I had one picked out. If I can find it. Yeah. One second, bear with me for a moment here while I get the fonts. One of the good and bad things um, about making logos is you end up with a ton of fonts, um, which is actually really fun uh, in its own right. Just to look at all the different fonts that are available online. One moment here. Okay. Well, I guess what I can do while I'm looking for it is just kind of take you guys through. Um, if I don't already have something in mind, which in this case I do, I will just select the font and sort of sc start scrolling through just to get the creative um, juices flowing, so to speak. So this one, okay, this would be a good example. So like I was saying, I kind of wanted the Gunther part to be something kind of um, a little bit grungy and just a little bit uh, messed up, you know, um, just kind of because as you can see, like I said, this guy's a bad guy. He's kind of, he's been through some stuff. So let's pick something that sort of represents that. So Gunther, this is kind of a cool deconstructed font here. And so we'll kind of leave that for our placeholder for now. And then for the great, I thought we would hearken back to uh, his circus background and uh, kind of his, what makes him Gunther the Great. So I wanted more of a classic um, circus font for that which I know I've got one in here, so just bear with me. I had some, I had the names picked out and they were in my head. And then uh, I started working on the other comics and it has escaped me. Let's see here. So, and with logos, you know, if it's something you're going to use um, in a professional level, you want to 
pay for the license for the fonts so that everything is in the up and up on that. But if it's something you're just doing for fun, like here, um, you can download a bunch of free fonts online and just play around with them um, in whatever sort of uh, art program you have or photo editing program or even Word, really. You could um, play around in just Microsoft Word with different fonts. So you can kind of see them I know I have a really good circus font in here. You can see I have a bit of a font problem in that I've got a bazillion and uh, Okay, I think I've gone through all of them and I still missed it somehow. So let's go right back real quick. This is exciting Facebook streaming TV, right? Watching the fonts here. Okay, let's. Aha! Well, that's not really what I want. This will this can do for now for sort of what I was talking about, which looks like I've got the bold selected here. Let me unselect. Okay, so we have Gunther, and I think his name definitely needs to be harken back to his uh, outfit over here. So let's give him a red color just like his uh, robe over here. So I'll select the fonts and actually let's go ahead. I'm going to flatten this out so I can just start manipulating it. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So now Gunther is this nice sort of red And I would see it kind of on a slant because, as I said, he's kind of, he's seen better days. He's been through some stuff. So his, this sort of represents him. And then the great, which is gonna harken back more to like circus, uh, classic circus colors which this orange is actually kind of nice, but I'm thinking let's do something a little more, something to make it pop here. Yeah. And a lot of it is just kind of seeing, you want to fill stuff in, kind of see what um, looks nice visually. So sometimes you just sort of need placeholders put in there to figure out what's going to look good. So right now I'm just sort of filling in the color and giving it, want to outline it also. That's a little too much, but that's okay. Just always back it off. And because um, I do most of my logos in pixel form, I always create them rather large at a large scale so that we can scale them up or down uh, depending on what we need to use it for whether it be posters or you know banners or um, things for conventions um, you never really know so it's always better if you're doing a pixel logo to make it as large as possible because you can always scale it down and keep the 
um, quality, but you can't scale it up and keep the quality because it will sort of pixelate once it gets larger. Okay, so what we have here, it kind of stands out pretty well, but it's not very readable. And so that's another key thing about a logo. You want it to be super readable. You want to be able to uh, read it from across the room if need be, just because you don't know what you're going to be next to online. Say somebody's scrolling through and they see your, your comic book cover, or even if you're in the store, you know, uh, you got to kind of compete with what's on the shelf there. So, okay. So I'm thinking we can put a gradient on this font just to sort of make it stand out a little more. So I've selected a kind of a lighter color and put it on color dodge, which is going to really brighten it up and make a pop here. As you can see, it's going from like the orange to this bright yellow. And so we have kind of a fun color going on for the carnival font. I'm going to just kind of play around with giving it another outline, but a thinner one, just to see if it works. Sometimes you try things and they work and it looks great. Other times it just doesn't pan out, but that's okay. Sometimes uh, the happy accidents are what end up looking the best. You just never really know. So I really like this dark color. It really makes it stand out. So we've got, and it gives it kind of that more traditional carnival feel to it as well. I don't want to cover up those details there. So what I'm doing is just kind of going through and filling these areas in. Just visually, uh, these kind of smaller areas may not read well from a distance. So I'm going to kind of customize this a little bit. Thank you, Matt. All right, so maybe, uh, you know, if you guys are at home and uh, I know a lot of people are like homeschooling and stuff right now. So maybe you guys could like make logos for uh, a, a family business, you know, kind of make up like a family business sort of uh, name and then create a logo it could be fun. Or you could just do something like maybe your cat needs a logo or your dog uh, or hamster. Okay, so I feel like we got a pretty good looking circus font going on there. And I think we could give Gunther's name a little more attention up here. I've got this on a separate layer, so I can kind of overlap this a bit. And I'm thinking let's Give us some kind of an outline as well, just to see how that's going to look. And I'm, what I'm doing here is just trying different um, sizing on the outlines, and I've got the layer locked, which happens sometimes. So. Let's, okay, new layer underneath it, and we're going to outline it and then see what we've got here. So it looks pretty cool. Um, I don't really like it overlaying on top of the circus font there. So again, a lot of this is just trial and error, and sometimes you don't really know until you see it visually. Um, if it's going to work. I think, and so here's a good example. Like, I, I like the look of this overall, but I don't really care for this down here. Um, 
I think it's too distracting on top of the the circus font. So let's just take that out. So I'm selecting it, taking it out, and we'll just re-outline it. All right. So um, I think we've got a pretty good start here. We've got uh, something that represents the character here, the Gunther, and then the, the Great, which sort of rec represents his uh, background and in, in working in the circus. And um, But what we need is something to sort of tie both of these elements together. Um, so like in the inked logo, uh, just to go back to that, um, sort of, let's see, like in this one or this one, how they're overlapping and the outlines kind of intertwine, you can kind of see how they work together to create, they're separate, they're different, but they also, you know, uh, are cohesive, I guess I would say, like a complete uh, dish. So let's try giving this whole thing an outline all together. Um, who knows on the color? What do you guys think? Let's start with the dark blue and see what happens. Okay. So, and what I would do here is fill this in these little areas like that maybe even that's looking better and so sort of bridging that gap in between this um, helps bring it together okay yeah i feel like we've got something here now we can sort of play around with the colors and see what we can get from there. Uh, looks like one of my layers selected something up here. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Keep your layers organized. It will help you in the end for sure, especially with logos. Because you never know, um, you know, uh, clients may want one specific area changed, or you yourself as a creator might need to change it um, to fit on a different cover, you know, or uh, just a different scenario in general. I'm wondering if we go with the brighter background here to help it kind of stand out, but then come back. and do change this outline. So what I did was I took the outline color that was around the grate down here and uh, applied that to the background underneath behind Gunther the grate. And now I'm going back and adding white to where the other color was at, just to sort of, I'm basically just kind of swapping those out. Okay, and so, Let's pretend like we had a comic book right here. That's about the scale-ish. And again, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing a logo, you just want to look at um, how's this going to look on the background depending on um, what color the background is, is it going to be able to work with the artwork underneath it or will you be able to manipulate it? Um, so let's zoom in here. Well, this is our uh, make-believe comic book right here for Gunther the Great. And so over here we would have our Fan the Flame logo right here and our credits whoever was part of the creative team would go right here and then generally um, for a comic book logo you want it to sort of reside somewhere in this area generally speaking every now and then 
um, depending on the issue, you might be able to put it somewhere crazy, like down here, or even right in the middle. Um, but you know, general comic book, you think about Superman, Batman, X Men. Um, there's this the sort of template or formula that you follow for traditional, um, which I don't know for sure, but I I think was kind of started because that's just how comics were displayed you know where you could see uh the top part of the comic but not the whole thing so that's where the logos went to try to grab everyone's attention so i'm going to try to scale this down to see how our logo will fit on here on the on our uh, gunther the great comic book And again, depending on what it is, I think, like I said, Gunther's kind of, a, he's a little bit crazy. So I think we can get away with making this logo a little bit cockeyed or off center, you know, um, either way. I always tend to go this way. So we do that. And then. Why not? Since we're here, let's go ahead and just drop this artwork I grabbed off the NamorJuniorComics.com website. Shameless plug there. Drop that in. And all right. So I'd say Gunther's ready for his uh, solo comic debut here, hypothetically speaking. Okay, so that's pretty much what it takes uh, to make a comic book logo. Um, hope you enjoyed this sort of crash course run through. Uh, we covered a lot of ground. There's a lot of lot to cover with this, but um, I hope it kind of gave you an idea and just some of the the process that I go through when I, I make a, a logo for a comic. And um, if you guys got any questions, uh, just uh, leave a question or a comment on the post and I'll come back and, and check it later and uh, be happy to get back to you guys. So other than that, uh, just be sure to come back uh, Friday when we have another class and learn some more comic book stuff. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care. Bye.